I'm going to show you this Marshall today because this is one of the newest stamps from them here in 2023 and I'm going to show it you in ways that well frankly it's important that you understand yes I'm back yes well where have I been well I was beginning to get a bit fed up of uh, the likes of YouTube and uh, people not being notified when I make the videos. Anyway, maybe more of that or not later. Here's the ST20H, which is really, this is like a JTM. I call it a JTM45, but it, it's not one of them. I've got a JTM45 over there. This is a JTM45, but it's not an original. This is a, it's one I built some while back. And uh, yeah, it's about 30 watts output on this one. Not the 45 that you might think it is. So this other amp is, well, Marshall has built what they think, or they say, probably, is like the original JTM 45 that they had. But this is less power. Maybe you get a bit of a clue where this one comes from. Now, by the way, just before I go any further, this has got a, an ad in it, but it's really an unsponsored ad. I bought this amp. And I wanted to just uh, mention the guys where I bought it from, because I bought a few from them, things like that. Uh, that's Fair Deal Music. You probably see a thing across the bottom of the screen. Or if you don't, it will be in the text anyway. Now, if you get yourself a way to Fair Deal Music, if you're in the UK... And have a word with Gary and his mates. Uh, chances are they'll either have one of these, why well, some don't, and they'll do you a great deal. And that's what it's all about, because at the end of the day, a martial amp's a martial amp. If you pay a thousand pound for one, or you pay seven hundred pounds for one, it's the same thing. So don't forget, fair deal music, they sell guitars, amps, everything you can think about, keyboards and all the rest of it. Just thought I'd mention it. I want to show you inside this one compared to that uh, Friedman uh, JJ Jr. Yeah, I had and ended up having to send back and it was at least twice the price of this one. This one's here in the UK. So let's see if this one's inferior in some way, even to that uh, Friedman or whether it's first class as well, I'd expect it to be from Marshall, that is. OK, well, here we are at the front of the amp. And you can see the chassis is pretty much like most of the other uh, studio series of these small 20 watt amps that, that are out there. And uh, there's a picture on screen right now of some of the others that I've got. In fact, I think I've got them all. <laughs> this is just the newest one. OK, let's look at it from this side. First of all, we got this uh, power transformer. This is a TXMA 91095. Interestingly, we've got some uh, 5881 main power tubes here, which are very different than, uh, than the other amps in this series, from what I see, if I remember right, but I've been asleep. Then we've got this thing over here, which is an output transformer. And of course, the output transformer has a title as well. And in this case, that's a TXOP 91014, just for your information. <laughs> You've got some ECC83s. In fact, all three of them are ECC83s marked in red note. I'm not going to screw that one off, but it's the same. And this one's got a shroud on, probably to protect uh, from a little bit of uh, squealing and feedback and that sort of thing. OK, well, I could turn the uh, chassis over, but I don't think I'll bother. Over at this far side, we've got the power transformer. You can see it coming in there. And look at these standby knobs and things like that, on and off, you know. Look at the quality of these and compare them to some of those other amps that I've reviewed in the past from other makers. You'll find that these are, well, they're as good as you get. They're all very tidy down this area as well, if you notice. And I can tell you there's no gunge or glue or anything trying to hold the sockets in place, like it was on some other products. Yeah, I've seen a lot of that, including on uh, Fractal Audio, and indeed, I think that was uh, even on the uh, Friedman. Because this is the uh, really the uh, preamp section. We go that away. So everything comes down and comes in here. You can see this is where they go. 
you'll notice that these little resistors are sort of standing off the board. And they're standing off the board for good reason. It's so that, uh, well, the board doesn't get hot and things like that. The tiny little ones are always stuck on the board, as you can see. We've got some electrolytic capacitors kicking around the board. And these are the same brand that they've always been. There's your first tube. Here's your second tube. And if we go further along, this is probably the pie tube over here. Because once you go past sort of around this area, you're moving across into the territory of the power amp. And you can see the power amp, the 5881s are down here, out of the way. And just take a look at these things here. You'll notice that they're all standing off the board, as they always have been in Marshall, uh, of recent times at the very least. And that's to keep the heat away from the board. Once again, Marshall have considered all of those things. And in my opinion, that's a great way of building amps, rather than having these tight on the board. As I said, as I have seen on many amps, and I think including Friedman. Hmm. So that says a lot too, doesn't it? About the design, really. And of course, some people will tell me, ah, oh, yeah, but Friedman's calculated that these don't get hot and all the rest of that. What a rubbish that I've heard. Well, the fact is, these are uh, cement resistors. And these cement resistors are made of this cement because they do get hot. It's that simple. Yeah. So overall quality, quite nice on this one. In fact, I can't really see anything out of place. I could line these up a little bit, these couple of little resistors, so they look a bit nicer, I guess. I could do that. But there's no real point in doing it. As well as the main board, of course, you've got this top board up here. It's got them usual pots across the top that Marshall use a lot. And down the bottom here, we've got the output side of things. And we've also got a loop over this section, which you can turn off funnily enough, down there. Uh, so they're all on little separate boards. So anything that can give you real aggro usually is on a separate little board. And I know that Marshall will probably have these components for available for a very, very long time. Anyway, enough of inside. As far as I'm concerned, that's nigh on perfect. OK, let's take a quick look around the back. First of all, you've got the serial number on the far side there. If anybody can see mine, I don't mind. Who cares? You've got a... Uh, section for the loudspeakers and this covers mainly most of the uh, sort of combinations you could have. You've got a 1B16 ohm, 28 ohm or 216 ohms or 1B4 ohm or 2B8 ohm. So quite a good selection across there. You've got the usual little bits of text which you can go and read yourself sometime. Uh, we've got a DI out there and we've actually got an FX loop here and that's an on and off to take it in and out of the circuit if you want. Up to you. You've got the usual Marshall amplification and it does say very clearly there, made in England, which it is. Yeah, none of this, uh, you know, Far East and then import it, put it in a case and then uh, call it English. There's none of that. You've got all the uh, approvals across the bottom here and this is the mains in. Uh, with a little fuse underneath that you can just see. This is a 230 volt uh, unit, uh, which you should consider, yeah, especially if you use 230 volts or 240 volts. This is the father of loud, isn't it? Okay, well, let's go from this side. Uh, this is a Mark II JTM, they say proudly. The Mark I is the one in the museum down at Marshall, and uh, I can put you a picture on screen of that as well. There it is. Yeah, very nice, but they won't let you near it, so, so there, it stays in its case. And strangely enough, they do say there's uh, two or three versions of the first one. I don't know why. They never explain that to me, even though I've been down there lots of times. Anyway, we've got an on and an off. Pretty obvious. And look at these old style knobs. This, this is fantastic stuff, isn't it? And we've got a sort of three-way switch on the next one. So we've got a low, an off, on standby. I'll call it off. And we've got a high. And on, on low, it's 5 watts. And on high, it's... 20 watts but to be honest the 5 watt volume is plenty loud enough for most people in uh, you know sort of home environments and bedrooms and that sort of thing and if you really want to get to 20 watts you'll have a bit more headroom but hey guess what 
do you really need it? Well, it depends what you play. This is a very versatile amp, but more of that later on. Here we are, you can see it's a JTM Studio. It's not a JTM 45 or a JTM whatever. It's a JTM Studio. That's what it is. And it's got a nice old fashioned indicator, which is something else that really uh, fits well with this amp. Along further, we've got a presence, a bass, a mid, a treble. We've got a high treble for these two. And we've got a normal for these two. If you can see loudness one and loudness two, it says there. More about that a bit later, and we'll talk a little bit about how you can hook these together and things like that. It's a very old-fashioned uh, way of doing things to increase the gain, but this amp does have a fair amount of gain as standard, but it, it's also really great for using those old-fashioned pedals. But more of that later, like I said. We've also got, you can see there, this, uh, this nice sort of creamy front, uh, which sort of sets it off a little bit. Yeah, there, there it is. And just zooming back a bit, you can see this very nice Marshall uh, logo. This is a sort of cast thing. Looks very nice and uh, looks expensive too, if you were to go manufacturing them. So I doubt you'll see them on many of the sort of imported amps. I'm surprised you see it on this one. Anyway, on the top we've got the handle, just the same as all the other marshals, and there's nothing else to say. Oh, except that this is a sort of silvery colour. It's not shiny or anything like that. It looks, it looks plexi. That's how I describe it. Okay, let's get on. Yeah, you get a manual with it, by the way, but this is a sort of quick start guide, so you don't get everything in here. And uh, you can actually download the full manual at www.marshall.com. What do you expect? That's the place. Those are the boys. Yeah. Now, the thing is, as well as that, I like to see the other thing. Before we get down to some plane. I like to see the three-year extended warranty. And, uh, you know, some people out there that make amps will say, oh, it's a lifetime guarantee, but that's never quite the same as what it suggests, in my opinion, and what I've seen. This one... This three-year extended, register your product to extend your marshal, your warranty. Yeah, what it covers, your marshal amplification covers defects in materials and workmanship in marshal amplification products purchased and serviced in the UK. Now, it might be different in America, it might be different in Australia or anywhere else. I can't answer for that. I can only tell you what's going here. And if you haven't got a three-year warranty, well... Go and kick some donkey and ask them why. <laughs> There's another few bits and pieces in there, but I don't even bother with any of that. Most people have seen martial amps. Now, how many people have seen a JTM? Uh, that's another story. And you might assume, just looking at this, and looking at that, you can see it's got its sort of four-way, very similar to what's down there. So you might assume, oh, they're, they're nearly the same. Well, they're not really. They're not really the same. This one is a, you know, 21st century Marshall from the 20th century. And that's, I guess, the same. But this is built today. And the originals, well, most people know what them are about. They sound very different. But this one, I think, it's just a personal opinion. I think this one has been... Uh, developed in such a way that it, well, it sounds better. If you were to go and get that old original JTM, yeah, I'm sure it'll work, and I'm sure it's got a good sound, because it would have of the time. But this one comes across to me like it's been made for today's players. And today's players go from clean to blues to rock to heavy rock to metal and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not saying this will cover every single angle <laughs> of the sort of music I've just been talking about, but it does go a long way towards it. And if you take a pedal and just throw one of them in front of it, wow. Now, just while we're in passing, I want you to sort of just mention which pedals I've tried. There are hundreds and hundreds of pedals, thousands of pedals indeed. But you know, looking at an amp like this, the JTM, and remember I've got that JTM 45, and I know what that sounds like. It sounds different than this one, that's for sure. But 
I decided to take a look at the, uh, well, the Ibanez Tube Screamer. It's been around a long time. Now, this is not the, uh, the oldest one I've got by any means. I think that one goes back a lot further. Yeah, it says old tube screen, which makes it old, doesn't it? Yeah, well, there it is. And, uh, yeah, I recommend that you could use one of them. Or one of these, indeed. No problem, because I already have. And if you was to be, well, slightly different, uh, you could use a Maxon. The OD808, which is... Take your pick. You know what I mean. Or we could go to the ultimate tube screamer. Well, I think it is. You might not. And that is a TS-808 hand-wired. And trust me, inside that thing, they are literally big, giant resistors, capacitors, and so on and so forth. This was only made, I believe, for a limited time. It might still be made, but they led you to believe it was limited time. I don't think they make that many. Very expensive. Then you've got this one, haven't you? The blues driver, the BD2 blues driver. Trust me, it works very well with this. Let's not forget the Marshall pedals and people like Fair Deal Music. They, uh, they sell all that stuff. So you could get a deal, couldn't you? Hey, how much are you going to do the amp and the... Oh, you get the idea. Information's down below. But the one I found the most useful, just a personal thing... You might be completely different than me. Well, you are, <laughs> and so am I. It's this one here. A lot of people might have seen it. And strangely enough, this emulates a super lead. Yeah. But not as I'd say. I, I would say that this one's set up in a slightly more driven way than that thing behind me. But this and this in combination... Uh, you can do the heavy rock. No problem. Definitely no problem. There are pedals around that could sort of drive this further. Because the great thing about it, the only reason I've got these pedals to show you, is that it does take pedals really, really well. Well, enough's enough. We're going to finish the chat now and get on with a bit of playing. Just before I go, the finish of this product is absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. Not a single floor on it. Everything I've seen on this amp is exactly what I'd expect it to be. And with its three-year warranty, well, it's not really much to argue with. I paid about £800 for this here in the UK. The list price is about £1,100, £1,150. For the head, I think it's a little bit different for the, uh, the combo. But it depends what you like. And they also have a, actually have a speaker cab for this one. If that's what you like, it's not what I like. I've got more cabs than all of adult dinners. So I'll never bother with that. But I'll be putting it through something like this, uh, yeah, hand-wired Marshall cab. And also that 1B12 that came with the other studio amps. That's got a, I think that's got a, uh, a V-type, yeah, V-type uh, speaker, yeah. Okay, well, I've been off the internet for a while. A little while, cooling down a little bit, because the stuff isn't getting out to the people that are even subscribed. I'm very frustrated about that. And to be serious, I'm considering just jacking it in and letting them well, go away. I'll be sending them, well, I'll start talking Russian. Every other word will end in off. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to think about that a little bit, haven't you? So, if I can't get to the people that already subscribe to me, there is no point in being on the platform. Uh, I don't need the money. I don't need somebody trying to dictate to me. I just want people to come and have a look at what I've done as opposed to other people. And it's very different. And I've also had uh, five or six, uh, I'll call them numpties on there, uh, criticising my age. Yeah, they do that sort of thing. Uh, well, I'll do it in reverse maybe. Well, when they snowflakes I like that, that's what they do, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, enough of that for now. Here's the playing. Okay, well... Here are some chords, just run-of-the-mill everyday stuff, and everything's set at 12 except for the high treble, which is at about, uh, well, number one on this amp, and it's running on uh, 5 watts. <laughs>
So I guess, uh, yeah, you heard the differences there. It's very nice and, uh, well, puts a bit of bottom back into the, uh, into the amp because this amp here, it's a bit toppy. It's like all of these early ones, whether it be the 1959 and the rest of them, this is a bit toppy too, I think. But do bear in mind that we haven't got the link between the two channels yet. So uh, what I think I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll do that now and then uh, level them up a bit so we get a, a different style of tone. But actually, I think just before I do that, I'll put a Strat on here and you can hear what a Strat sounds like. OK, well, here's my uh, 2008 uh, Strat. It's been uh, messed around with a bit, but uh, the pickups are actually the noiseless pickups, if I remember right on this, because I never changed them. They just just look like ordinary pickups. So here's an example, just a few chords. Doesn't really matter, does it? Nothing's changed on the amp, by the way. Okay, well, it's an amp. You've heard them before. You've heard it, you've heard it a million times. Anyway, I'm going to jump the two and uh, balance up where I think's a reasonable tone. Just a few chords, and then we'll play a track after. Just whatever it might be. Well, a good example is on the uh, Strat with this sort of link going on because it sort of well tames it a little bit. You're able to. Make plenty of adjustments to get rid of the treble if you want to. Some people don't. And, uh, you know, you, as you can hear, you've got more bottom end. So just a few chords again, and it's on the treble pickup. So if you feel that cut's gone away a bit, well, you can bring it back. But uh, it's easier to balance when you get this, uh, this link across. I think so. down here that's not really how I play <laughs> they're just examples if you want to get great uh, examples of the tones off this amp without my uh, dreaded pedal although I think he does actually use one go to the Marshall site don't waste your time with these other guys who only show you just a little bit of playing or whatever it is they do I'm not here to show you the playing I'm here to show you the rest of it what they don't and uh, yeah when you go to the Marshall site you'll get to see the Marshall review and that covers the uh, the tones in every way that you could really uh, want to use this amp I think so don't forget that will you you know, I think it's, a, it's an important aspect
Thank you.